discuss the connection <laughs> between life Woo! and acting. All righty, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Mornings with Matt, the Deering Acting Studio Podcast. We are not worthy, ladies and gentlemen. We are not worthy today. <laughs> we have... Every morning. <laughs> I mean, not every, morning. every morning, like some mornings, but like, you are right. I, I'm always in the middle of like a great energy, great thought, and then Brian <laughs> likes to play the uh, the live live. I like to watch it live, but 10 seconds behind. Good, good, good. All right, so now that all the energy has been sucked out of the room, <laughs> ladies Thank and gentlemen, you. let's inject the energy back in. We've got Gary and Larry, the Lane twins, the Lane brothers. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> who is who? <laughs> Gary, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Are these your real names or are these stage names? Because the no, our parents did that to us. They get in the South. They love to rhyme the twins. So we got Gary and Larry. Yes. <laughs> so do you do you know other twins that are also rhymed? Oh gosh, Brian and Ryan, Clint and Kent. <laughs> <laughs> Melinda and Belinda, we love you, but you got it worse than we did. Melinda and Belinda. <laughs> Wait, did did you say Clint and Kent? Clint, Clint and Kent. Kent. And listen, okay, this is the worst ever. We know twins. They're both named Brian. One's with an I, and one's with a Y. And we <laughs> no. Y. Oh my gosh, that's bad. That is that's hilarious. That's really funny. Yeah. So, um, is there like a secret a meeting where like, where like twins get together and talk about their names? Is that, is that where you no, found no, all no, this? No, info? There, there's a big uh, twins festival in Cleveland, Ohio. It's every year in August. So it's like 5,000 sets of twins from all over the world that come every August to outside of Cleveland. And this was the first year in like 45 years. They didn't have it because of COVID. So, I mean, we've only been like three times ever, like in our life, but some twins go every year, like a pilgrimage. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> that's hilarious so but but i mean to be a twin i my sister's actually married to an identical twin here in arizona um that to to live the the twin life is probably it's just unique right so it's probably nice to gather i guess with all the twins of the world all and the other and and then talk it's about things because that, weekend, that weekend everybody in the whole little town is called twinsburg but everybody's twins so you walk in burger king and there's like 80 sets of identical twins so you finally feel normal for one weekend <laughs> <laughs> twins founded the town and like 180 sets live in the town so it's just a whole twin thing for like one weekend you just go and there's twins everywhere you see, and everybody dresses alike so it's crazy that is all, <laughs> all right all right gentlemen where are you from don't judge us <laughs> Where, where are you from? Where's the accent coming from? North Carolina. North Carolina. So I, I now understand, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why, but, but why you, you get the chance to interview so many famous people. You're just straight up charming. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing about it, the Southern thing, it always helps us and we have not lost it. We've been out here for 15 years in LA, but because we hear it every day, we, we don't never lose that accent, but it's been something that's been a blessing for us. So, and a lot of celebrities have never been interviewed by twins. So we just have fun with it. We yeah. Really no, that's it. amazing. All right, have, so. have you ever put on the same outfit to like mess with somebody? Right? No, we always say we only dress alike if we're making money. So we, oh, okay. Oh, like, that is cool. Boom. And stuff like that. And we would go to auditions when we lived in Manhattan, and he would ride the subway train behind me, the cart behind me. He wouldn't ride in the same cart because we, because we had to be dressed alike. And people <laughs> would be like, oh, that's cute when you were five, but we're like 25. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> I, I I don't know. You guys are still cute to me. Um, uh, Joanne says. <laughs> Joanne says Rosewood in the house. So Joanne, Joanne stepped. Joanne, we love Joanne and Layla. They got us. They got us up this morning early for you guys. So. Joanne was Miss Rosewood, so she represented well. She, she, she was. She was Miss Rosewood, really. She was, she was Miss Rosewood. Yes. We're going to have to do a little research on that. Oh, uh, yeah, guys. for sure. Uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, for those of you who don't know who these guys are, um, this it, 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 amazing. I mean, it just blows me away that they, they're on our show today. So um, thank you, guys. And thank you to Joanne because she, she made this connection. But uh, yes. these guys run a show uh, or run a website called The Twin Zone. Um, and they are uh, Gary and Larry Lane, born in North Carolina. And um, 
far left. Been on films like Zoolander, Spider Man, oh. Spider Man Two. Um, one of my favorite uh, films of all time, Patriots. I think that's such a cool, such a cool movie. Oh. You guys are now um, interviewing. I, when I was looking at the different people that you've interviewed, I was showing my wife this morning. I was like, "This is crazy." Uh, you know, like we we got Kathy Bates. We got, I mean, you name it. Like every single star I could think of, you guys have pretty much interviewed. Um, so let's let's rewind a little bit. Let's there, start. There's the matching right there. <laughs> yeah, we're showing the website right now. That's because they're getting paid, guys. Every time they're matching, they're getting paid. Just, just <laughs> cha ching. <laughs> Did you see that was Hugh Jackman? They, that's Hugh Jackman. I, I yeah. But that yeah, is I was, that is the greatest showman right there. Guys, my the, the greatest. My biggest excited moment was Han Solo. Let's just be very honest. Let's Kate not Hudson. I, I mean, you, <laughs> just you name the celebrity. So so before we talk about famous, because I don't really care all that much about famous. Truthfully, I love to hear the journey. And so, yeah. if if we could talk about the that decision that you made. Because here's the thing, for a lot of people, there's this, there's this idea of I moved to LA and then we just make it, you know? And of course you guys are, are very unique, you know, you're, you're twins, you have all this, but it's not like it's easy. And so you, you decide to make this journey and, and, that, and that's right for you. Other people can find their niche in any town, in any place. Um, right. But I, I love to hear your story because I think there's one thing that is good about making a move like that and that is if you've made a decision, this is what I'm gonna do and I'm not going back. And you can kind of yes. do that without having to move geographically, but there is, the, there is that sort of idea like, okay, I'm going and like no looking back type thing. So um, let's start at the journey. Let's start at the like, how did you, were you two like in your room and you're like, all right, let's just do it. <laughs> well, we, I, think, I think we always got attention from being twins, but we really didn't, we didn't take classes in school like drama and things like that. When we were 19, um, Pepsi, the drink, it originated in Newburn, North Carolina, like an hour from our house. So they were doing the hundred year anniversary, uh, a big commercial. They were in cast all local. So thousands of people went to this audition and we got cast out of like eight speaking roles. We got cast as two of the eight. So when we did that Pepsi commercial, and well, we actually got cut. But we, <laughs> but, that's because um, you didn't we, have during yeah. acting studio in your life yet. That's what that's a, yeah, that's we, why. It was a Super Bowl commercial. It was a Super Bowl oh. Oh. Okay. So you have to think we told God and country about this commercial, and then when it <laughs> aired, we got cut out because this dog was barking at this light that was floating around, and they cut the three people after the dog. So oh we man, got, but that kind of gave us the yeah. bug, and then from that point, we talked about making the move to New York. So once we made that move to New York and drove a U-Haul out of North Carolina, then it was official. Then it was it was official for us. So. I mean, you know, and then we just kind of, we, we got on Zoolander. We got like an extra part on Zoolander with Ben Stiller. So we were in the crowd and I guess there was another set of identical twins with us. Cause we, and we both got together cause we were kind of talking and Ben moved us up. He's like, I want these guys to be behind little Kim, like her bodyguards. So once he established us, that's how we got inside. And that was 20 years ago now. Wow. So Dang. Stiller got us into the union for so, sure. So we, we actually, one of the greatest uh, movies. Wow. Yes. <laughs> We were at an event years later that he was at, and we thanked them for getting us our SAG card, and he was really cool, but he really did pull us up, and they put us right behind little Kim in that walk-off scene, and we had, like, shades, and we were, like, her bodyguards, and that got us into the union, so we've kind of been going from, from then on. But from New York, we actually got in the union because we figured we'd go to New York and try to get in there because our agents lived in New York, and we would go into the city and stay with them. So then we made the move out to California, but true story, we had got out to California, and we auditioned for a show, obviously, Fear Factor. We got on Fear Factor December 4th. We had just moved to L.A. We got our apartment. All we had was a futon. Wait, wait. Hang spent on. all of our money. We had saved up like $9,000. So first and last month's rent, all this crap, our money was gone. But we had a futon. So December 4th, we get into L.A. We booked Fear Factor. We get on Fear Factor December 6th. We win the show. So they say, oh, it's not going to air till April. You're not going to get your $50,000 check. But lo and behold, on the 23rd, of December we get the check we're sitting there it's already after hours we can't cash it we're eating top ramen in a studio in LA with no no money and we can't even cash it so we call our mom we're like mom we got a $50,000 check and we're eating top ramen noodles. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh all right let me just say this uh the 
These guys are awesome. I mean, having two guests at the same time that know exactly where the other one is going. I mean, we we just sit back and listen to the stories. Yeah, I, it's I great. Strive, I strive for our improv <laughs> yeah. to go that way. Oh this my is gosh. this is no gap dialogue here. They're just taking one thing and going to the next bop, and bop, going bop. to the next. But look, with twins on, let me tell you, it helps because if I'm asking what the celebrity, whoever it is, something, he's over there thinking, okay, I need to chime in here. So we it works it. out well for us, and we don't even think that we do it. But you know, it's a twin thing, I guess. But. Do, do, do you guys? Do you guys remember the? Um, do you remember the line that you had for the Pepsi commercial? Oh yeah. Okay. So okay. This is if you kids won't know this, but Pepsi it used to be white, red, and blue the can, uh -huh. and then they came out with a dark blue can. Remember, it was all dark blue was a new thing. So this was brand new. So they had all of that new with the signage sent in. So we had the one liter bottle, and then they had the new cans. One of the girls had that. So me and like take your bottle. Come on now. Oh, I got water. <laughs> so we had to we had to do one, two, three. Pepsi rocks. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. How does that get cut for? A dog, hey, man. Uh, no, no, oh it was gosh. the background noise that ruined it. Uh, there, there was a, there was, we were sitting there on set, and this woman just walked across with this golden retriever. And the, the guy, literally, the producer went up and said, Can we try something with your dog? So, we're all, all the actors are sitting there. We've already filmed. So, now the dog is sitting there and they're floating something and making the dog look at it. I was like, God, I even remember saying it. This is going to be crappy if we get cut in that dog. <laughs> dog. <laughs> so, yes. so, so, you jinxed yourself just a little <laughs> bit, is what you're saying. There, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pepsi rocks. That's hilarious. I, way, we redeemed ourselves. Like years later, we got uh, Dr. Shows. Dr. Shows. You remember when they'd say, hey, Helen, have you tried the melon? Are you jelling? Jellin'? Jellin'? Remember how they were? So we got the twin one, and we came up to the girls, and we're like, we're jelling, jelling. And that one made it in, and we made a lot of money. Yeah, we made a lot of money on that <laughs> oh my god that's uh, the best nick let me know that he and i should just dress as twins and see how that works out oh yeah see, yeah. yeah that'll work out <laughs> yeah well, i was i was gonna say i find it fascinating because brian and i are 10 years apart we kind of look alike but we definitely sound exactly alike so we'll trick our mom on the phone we'll trick our dad on the phone and that's why i ask because like if if I was a twin, honestly, I'd be tricking people twenty four seven. It'd be part that of That sounds life. great. 100%. You think you think that, but you might get sick of it. You know what I mean? Like there's that's true. That's that whole, true. Like okay, been no, there, done yeah, that. You took algebra exams. Oh yeah, because he took his algebra exams. I went and took them as him in school. Oh no. So, <laughs> yes. Oh, that is awesome. Yes. <laughs> and, then, and look, this is the worst. We used to go to like because uh, we live in Goldsboro, so there's this the bigger town is Raleigh. So we would go to Raleigh, and they'd have like the buffets that would have crab legs. It would be like twenty four ninety nine a person. So we would just go and one of us would pretend like we were sick and he would eat a plate then, then we'd, we'd go switch, switch shirts, shirts and then, then the other one would eat plate, and we kept and switching we, and we only paid for one buffet <laughs> wow oh my gosh oh so man you, so you've taken advantage a little bit yeah so who, who runs the, who runs the numbers with the business Oh, he kind of does the numbers. Yeah, yeah. The, the guy, the guy, the guy, who, did the the guy who did the algebra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. And I got a couple of speeding tickets, and I actually used his license, so I gave him two tickets. So I like, and I wasn't even in the car. He gave me speeding tickets. That's hilarious. Yeah. All right, so um, so I'm curious, just because it's one of my favorite movies. Um, I know you guys. You one of your first roles was on um, Patriot, right? Or Patriots with yes. with Mel Gibson. What was that like? Well, that was actually really cool. That We were in North Carolina, so that was filmed in Rock Hill, South Carolina, yes. near Charlotte. The cool thing about that was we had to go to like a two-week training and learn how to fire muskets, and you had to do learn everything that was happening there. But luckily, they picked us because we were twins to be the flag bearers because so they used to have there. one twin would have the American flag and one would have the regimental flag. So we got to have that scene. So our friends were kind of getting burnt with uh, gunpowder, firing their muskets. <laughs> and we, we, just, gun, we were just standing there. Holding our flags, they had. Us. <laughs> but then when we got to the major scenes, because Chris Cooper was a general, so they put him right beside of us because we were the colors. And then when they did the scene where everybody runs over the hill, Mel Gibson was right in front of us. So we were just because we were the color guard, we were just right in the heart of it. But the cool thing about Mel Gibson, um, he's got identical twin sons. He's got twin sons. But everybody said when Mel comes on set. 
don't talk to him. You know, he's going to be in the zone or whatever. And we had already met Heath Ledger and all the rest, but we'd never met Mel. So then everybody was just leaving Mel alone. So when we came back from lunch, we were supposed to go to where the colors were and pick that shot up. And when we were walking up, Mel Gibson started walking towards me. Like, he's walking right to us. I was like, Mel's coming, Mel's coming, Mel's coming. We're saying under our breath. And he's like, hey, guys, I want to do something. When we yell the first cut, when they yell cut, I want y'all to take out this double mint gum. And we're going to sing the double mint gum song. And we said this right to us. Yeah, right to us. So then when they yelled cut, Mel jumped up and got between us we sang the double mint gum song and roland emmerich and all of them in the tent city we're just laughing us they were laughing. Busting out laughing. but then our mom uh everybody kind of all the other soldiers were pissed off at us because we took a picture with him and all this stuff but he did it and not us and our mom's like well that's something that you were blessed with and he came up to you you didn't seek that out so that was a lesson yeah. learned that we didn't feel bad about it but a lot of our friends dissed us on the set and we've been working with them for 100 days wow that's crazy so. and what was that did that happen um after you moved or before we that were, was before. Yeah, we were still in North Carolina. I thought you were going to say after or before Mel went crazy. We <laughs> <laughs> um, no, know, I'm going to avoid that subject, I think. <laughs> local stuff in like Wilmington and that, Dawson. We did a little bit on Dawson's Creek. So that kind of got us in the buzz. And then we went up to New York and got in the union. That's great. So, and, and just a lesson out there for all the kids. I, I am a huge advocate of school and yes. and mm -hmm. um, l learning and and falling in love with learning and if we look at, at what happened here in this film these guys are brought on to a major motion picture and they're and they're brought in for a couple weeks to do what to learn so that they can they can um, mm -hmm. know exactly how to do something and do it properly and mm -hmm. I, lo I love that that they're, they're, they're capturing history and they're they're teaching all the extras how to shoot a gun how to hold it right because they want to be accurate and so, so you, you want to be a lifelong learner if you're going to be an actor. That way, any role you take on, you, you have the skill of learning. So if you play a doctor, you play a lawyer, you play whatever part, you can like, dive into that character and, and know what you're talking about. Because if, if you don't know what you're talking about, you can't be authentic, then you're not going to be good yeah. on film. You guys agree we with that? We actually went around to a lot of the ROTC classes, the Patriot, because some of the battle scenes were so big. So they used a lot of the local schools and let the students be in the back of the scenes in the ROTC program. So it was really cool. Yeah, that is. Oh, that is neat. All right, so let's talk about uh, Wipeout really quick because you guys won Wipeout too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, there's got to be an air horn for that. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That was the hardest thing we've ever done because we, we won 50,000 on Fear Factor. We did a show called Set for Life and won 125,000. We did Wipeout and won 50,000, but that retired us from any of from that any reality show. Because Wipeout was so hard on our bodies, but we won the money. So the 11 <laughs> other teams got nothing for getting beat up. So we were very happy. But you know how the Wipeout course is. So you kind of drop down in the game at the beginning. So we could all see the teams going into the game, and there were 12 sets of too like there was a mother and a son brothers sisters but we were the only twins so we literally the first set goes in wait the, wait you got to set up we they made you pick one through 12 so we picked number seven so we got to at least see six teams going before we went in so now go ahead so the first one was <laughs> a mom and a son and they fell into the game so within 60 seconds the ambulance comes in oh. so the mom falls off one of the stunts and breaks her leg so the oh. ambulance takes oh. her out so then they come over and, and like, the producer's like team, team number two, two. <laughs> let's go and we're like we're and like, like oh. and then, <laughs> like, we got ourselves into, but it was hard. That was a hard game show. But so, I gotta tell you, so we, at the end, it's a, a girl named Sally and her dad against me and him. So we're sitting in this van for like 45 minutes blindfolded with the dad, and they, Sally's on the course. And so the dad finally is like, what's going on with Sally? Like, why are we still sitting here? Because he knows he, he was should. getting worried. Okay, so then I was the next one to go after Sally. So they take me, and this was back when they lay you on that thing, and they shoot you like Superman into the <laughs> yeah, game. So I'm laying there, and the instructor's like giving me instructions. He goes, now listen, when you hit the water, don't tuck your knees because you don't want to end up like Sally. And I'm about to say, what happened to Sally? And I'm in the game. So the whole time I'm doing the thing, I'm like, what happened to Sally? And so what she did was she tucked her knees and broke two ribs. Whoa. So then when they edit the show, at Sally's going like this, and they're like, oh, Sally, Sally ran, out of time. ran out of time. I'm like, no, she's so, broke her. So they <laughs> edited the pain out of that show. That's what I, I was always curious how people oh, like man. weren't getting more hurt than than but they are yes. they're really getting severely yeah, hurt. They, yeah, Sal, we sent Sally some of our money for she was in college, so we sent her like a thousand dollars and stuff. Did you really? That's amazing. Really, really That's nice. so nice. That's so cool. All right, so guys. so really quick, just 
just sincere curiosity, do you know like what episode it was or like what? Yes, season? Okay. So on Fear Factor, it was season two and it was called uh, just the twin show. Yes. And yes. Wipeout was for winter Wipeout and it was called episode 408 and it was called Kids Eat for Free. So okay. It was like a family show. It was number 408. Gotcha. Because I, I do want to watch you wipe out. That's <laughs> yeah. We yeah. wipe out a lot. Oh, we wipe so, out a lot. Guys. So <laughs> did, did you guys? Did, were you on the the balls? Like, did you do the one where oh, you? Gosh. Yeah. And what they did was the producers like, no, listen, because we did it when they had a conveyor belt, so we couldn't even run and plan the first it's jump. It's pulling you. It's pulling you. So ours was really hard. So the producers like, no, listen, you don't want to hit that first ball. You, you want, want to jump clear that or hit ball. that second ball. <laughs> and as soon as the producer walked away, I was like, they just want us to just wipe out as hard as we can. We told all the other contestants. So, I mean, we wiped out, and the, on the winter one, there was two feet of suds. So, when you hit the water, you You're just had foam through the face. foam. It was terrible. It was hard. We had, and, like, anxiety. And they're, thro they're throwing snowballs, snowballs at So, you. all the crew are literally just lobbing snowballs. So, you'll make the jump, and they hit you in the head with a snowball <laughs> so midair. They, listen, listen, they hit me in the eyes so hard, I just saw stars. So, I leaned down, and he, like, I got over him. him, and they're just hitting me in the back with snowballs. <laughs> yeah, and so, I got so mad when I got to Jill Wagner, who Jill, Jill the host, was also from North Carolina, so she loved us so she's like why are you hitting my twins and so she was like yelling at the boosters but i mean i had a black eye for like five days they hit me so hard with, with a snowball that's incredible so we earned that 50 kids yeah. we earned it yeah, <laughs> yeah so are those are those like balls that you jump across i mean are they pretty much impossible because it, it looks impossible impossible if you can stop at the end and you can make your first jump and balance and make your second jump but they don't want that so then they created the conveyor belt that just throws you into it yeah because yeah, it's 90 percent designed to make you wipe out and we did the dizzy dummy we did all the fun things <sighs> but we won the money so if we didn't win the money we wouldn't even want to talk about it because we'd be so embarrassed so thank god we won all right, so let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the twin zone how that came about because i mean this is a, a big part of what you're doing now right Yes. So what I did, um, I worked for an outlet called Pop Rap, and he would actually come help me set up at the carpet. So you have to set a camera up and light up and all that. So then the people I was interviewing would notice him in the background and just kind of, you know, play with the twin thing. And I was like, well, we just kind of need to do our own thing. So that's when we created Twin Zone and copyrighted it and everything. But I'll also say another lesson to the kids, like e even with this, you have to apply it because when we go to a red carpet, you get a whatever the events for, you get a list of 50 people. But what I have to do and what he has to do we have to research those 50 people for three or four days before ask and we questions. have to know when, when glenn close is standing in front of you what you're going to ask her so everything you have to put the techniques and you have to put the training no matter what you're doing and it's been great for us because we have actually at these events producers and people have noticed us because we're there That's we're right. putting ourselves out front and you know you've got to kind of tie everything back to your craft and what what you love to do take a breath that was good that was good <laughs> take a breath well and and, and and interviewing can be hard i mean it's it's really mm -hmm. hard actually you know and and people a lot of times don't necessarily want to talk to somebody who who's going to interview them because you know there's the whole you know stigma around the news and the media and like and and you know negative stories coming out and stuff so you have to kind of break them down a little bit and ideally like you're saying ask the right question that that's poignant and, and matters um yeah that's that's really cool and sometimes we're standing there because remember all the big outlets are up the carpet like Entertainment Tonight and Access Hollywood. So a lot of times when the big celebrities get down to us who are brand new, a lot of times they won't even stop. They just keep going. So a lot of the press on the far end gets So that. I can just name off the ones we pulled over just because of the twin thing. We got uh, Angela Bassett. We got Kathy Bates. Glenn Close because they were all going on around and, and going on into the event so we can pull them over with Lori, the Metcalf, thing. Lori Metcalf walked over and said you know talk, started talking Ted about being Dance twins so it's kind of cool yeah so we use, use anything you've got that makes you special or unique use it to your advantage yeah okay I love that so so now you're uh, now is this something you're going to keep pursuing is this something that like is this like one of the new things you're doing now well, we love to do we love to do the twin zone because there's always events, there's always things happening here in Hollywood because that's where we're at. But as far as commercials and things like that, that's what we love to do yeah. because we we still do the twin thing. But of course, with COVID, everything's kind of been changed to the side, so it's all changed up a little bit. So everyone kind of has to wait and see what the new normal is going to be. Yeah, and and I like what you're saying about you know you have to put the hard work in no matter what. I'm we we preach this a lot around here. Um, our thing is passion, love, mastery. You got to be passionate about what you do. Um, yes. You should center every decision in love and then focus on mastery, which just means 
a never ending pursuit of trying to get better right. is, is really all, all the, the, yes. our three principles are. Um, but if I look at where you're at and then I looked at all the celebrities you've, you've met and, and like you're saying, like some of them didn't want to stop and they're kind of coming in and out. Um, and, and I'm like, Hey, this is a big deal. They're going to be on our show. But then there's also this realization that truthfully you're, you're sort of famous if you, if we put you in a bubble over here, but, mm -hmm. but as of, as of a couple of weeks ago, I had never heard your name before. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and, yes. and there's this idea of, you know, if, if I'm in a particular profession, whatever it is, th there's going to be the, the, the famous person in your bubble and, and, and you're going to, you're going to be like, Oh, do you know about, you know, this architect? He's like so famous. I'll be like, I'm not in architecture. Like I would, I'd see right. him at the grocery store. It wouldn't matter to me, but you'd be a huge fan of that person. Right. Yes. And so, so when it comes to this idea of like fame, we want to, we want to avoid that idea and kind of get away from that and just focus on the work ethic and understand that you can have success <laughs> as an actor, as a performer, as an artist, and you can find your niche, make a living, love what you do. And there's, and it's never ending journey of getting better and, and yes. just, just mm -hmm. making a living can be, can be very satisfying. It, it, and I think a lot of people, they focus on the idea of either like, I'm an extra like nobody and, and sadness or fame and there's nothing in between, you know? And yeah. one thing else, one thing I'll say to the kids, um, when we first moved out here, we made a lot of friends, but the people you're going to meet along the way, the people you're in class right now, hold on to those relationships, especially the ones that really impact you because so many of our friends that we started out here in LA, they're writers. Now our friend Abe is a, a writer on the new show, filthy rich. So our friends are writing and producing now. So we actually have had friends that we started out here with yeah. that have written us into their web series or written us into their TV series. So you just never know who's going to have an impact on your life. So just make all those connections and make real connections. So yeah. I got a couple of questions really quick for them so from far. The, from um, the YouTube? Yeah, two so far. Okay, great. We have um, this from our from our audience watching. We got a few questions okay. for you guys. Awesome. One is from uh, Jones, uh, Joanne's son, and so love this one. Uh, who, as a side note, happens to be a master at Among Us for all the people watching. Just a game. Okay. That we play. Um, so, um, so they said hi, Larry and Gary. <laughs> How was the rotten hi. egg <laughs> on Fear Factor? How was the oh, rotten egg? Oh, that, okay, so this is, if you go to New York in Chinatown, <laughs> this is a rotten egg. It's like a green and purple it's egg. A it's, delicacy. it's a delicacy. People eat them every day. But this was the most disgusting thing. We had to play, we had a pool table, and you had to sink the balls in, and whatever you didn't sink, you had to eat. So we both, so we had the rotten egg. We had oh. 50 of live, the big black, the African ants. They were live. And then two of the hottest peppers in the world, habanero peppers. And a and cup squid of guts. Squid, guts. squid guts. So whatever you sunk in the pool, table you didn't have to eat and you got five shots so we both had to eat this egg so it was green on the outside and purple in the middle oh. and it's it's the driest thing ever but we always say we got the fifty thousand. but that we didn't eat eggs for a year after that it was, it was like, <laughs> I bet. oh my what gosh was like, what was the what was the worst one out of all out of those we only had to eat the egg because we were really good at pool. The girls that we were playing against, they couldn't play pool, so they had to eat all four. Oh. So they said the peppers were just terrible. And then the next day when we came back for the last stunt for the money, the girls said that those peppers just burned them all the way through. They yeah, said they it was a hot habanero so, so hot. So we felt bad for them. We did not send them money because back then we needed every dollar. We had just moved to L.A. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> all right, so – um. So, but before we kind of wrap this up, we got to get into what you're doing right now, which is really exciting, and and how you met yes. Dolly Parton, and and now you're on this whole like new journey with with somebody who <clears throat> is an icon. I mean, really, can, do do you yes. ever stop sometimes and go like, how the heck? Are, like are we hanging out with Dolly Parton? You know what I mean? Like it's it's yeah. pretty. Well, crazy. She's one like well, that, when we grew up in North Carolina, our parents loved old country, so they loved Kenny and Dolly. So we grew up in that realm. But then when we started doing the interviews, and we were always like a fan of hers. But she's one of those people. And anyone that will talk about her, she's just the nice person in the world. She treats everyone the same, whether you're bringing her her lunch or, you know, whether you're on screen with her. So that's one thing we noticed. But with uh, we're doing 
on a documentary called Still Working 9 to 5, and a lot of kids, if they haven't seen the movie 9 to 5, it's on Stars right now, but it's about three secretaries, and they're not uh, rewarded for the same pay. They're not rewarded for the jobs that they're doing, and it's kind of like a, a fun revenge on the boss because of the way they're treated in the workplace, and it's and, still and, true today. And, and when was when was this made? What was do you, what year was it? The movie it? came out in 1980, so it's a 40-year anniversary. It's this year, which is why we're doing it. So, so, so then, and then talking about Dolly Parton and the things she's in, invested in imagine this right so she's she's finding a way through comedy to talk about social issues well before like yes. like now how we're bringing them up she was already starting to be like like lighting a fire of change and and that's how it goes like sometimes you have to just plant a seed like that to bring attention yes. to something before you can like really light the fire you know yeah, see, we've learned the history of the movie because we had seen the movie like everybody else. But through doing this for two years and doing all these interviews, uh, Jane Fonda was the one that wanted to shine that light on the women in the workplace. Dolly, of course, wrote the amazing anthem that's still true today. Um, so Lily, Dolly and Jane, they kind of have just become icons. So the fact that we sat them down and interviewed them about nine to five, there's also there was a nine to five TV series. There was a nine to five musical that went to Broadway. There's a nine to five that's currently playing in london so it's had a 40-year life on its own so what we did is we partnered up with uh, my producing partner camille hardman because she knows the women's rights and the women's issues that have dealt with because women are still not in the constitution under the equal rights so we kind of timeline the nine to five timeline with the women's movement timeline over the last 40 years and that is what is going to be the documentary that we're making now I'm, I'm sorry you're gonna you're about to educate me and i'm gonna i'm gonna feel really stupid here for a second <laughs> Did you just say women are not in the Constitution like right now still? Women are not in the Constitution. So the Equal Rights Amendment for women to be equal under the law, under the Constitution, in 1982 was up for the vote and it was struck down. So 38 states out of the states had to uh, ratify to get it voted in and only 35 did. So it was struck down in 1982 and it's never been brought back into the constitution and the Senate for a vote. So right now the equal rights amendment has still not been passed and women are not equal in the law. And all of the interviews we've interviewed, uh, so many people, Rita Moreno, Rita Moreno Janney, so many, not just actresses, we've interviewed activists that have fought for the ERA. But the good news is that we were actually filming and we filmed uh, Lily Ledbetter, who she was in 2009, Obama signed in the Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Act. And what that says is that if a woman uh, is in the office or a man and finds out they are being paid less for the same job that someone else is doing, they no longer have to wait. It used to be 90 days or they would lose the pay. So they know there's no limit now. That's what the Fair Pay Act did. So we actually interviewed Lily Ledbetter and we were in Virginia when it ratified as the 38th state. So now there are 38 states. So if it goes back to Senate, it can be voted in now, but it has not been voted in yet. Wow. I see, no so, idea. See, oh, like, yeah. This just goes back to like, sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And, and I'm, right. I'm such a huge fan of being curious and, and not just assuming things. And, and thank you for shedding a light on that. I mean, that's, that's like a, a big, big deal. And uh, man, I hope that gets voted in really soon. That, that's, uh, that's, that just, I mean, I just assumed it was. So that's, you know, my yeah, ignorance right there. That, that's the thing, the movie, what we're trying to do with a documentary, what the movie did in 1980, it was a comedy but they got the key issues in which are equal pay for women equal job advancement sexual harassment, sexual harassment. that was heart chasing dolly around rooster to a hen but that was sexual harassment and it wasn't even labeled at that time in 1986 sexual harassment had not even been turned and then also uh universal daycare for women so we're looking 40 years later these issues still have not been fixed but we've got a lot of the story a lot of the comedy but we're still putting the issues in because you have to kind of lead into those topics because a lot of times people don't want to hear them. Yeah. But they're still there. So we're we're working on some original music for this with Dolly. So just that's massive. She's wow. gonna do some stuff for the documentary. Dude, that's Huge. amazing. You guys are doing really good work. And I and I can say, you know, to to give you know, America some credit socially, we've come a long way. I think there's a lot of good people who just uh, like would just assume, like, of course, equal rights. Um, but the fact that it's not in law means that 
we're not protecting women legally. Yes. And that, that it doesn't matter if there's 90% good people, it's the 10% that are bad that would take advantage of this. Mm -hmm. And yes. leg legally, we can't go after them. And is that that's what has to change. So, um, you know, it's, it's a big and deal. Unfortunately, even in Hollywood, you just saw it with uh, Mark Wahlberg and Michelle Williams. They came back and filmed the exact same scenes. They were both lead actors and she was paid a million less than him so it's e even true with women in hollywood and they were represented by the same agency and she made millions less to refilm the same scenes because you know so it's not only like you know working women women astronauts women nurses women in hollywood actresses it's women in general that are on a lower level and all we're doing is trying to shine a light on it and the way alice and janney and uh, dolly and lily and jane and everyone came back and interviewed with us 40 years later still talking about it we feel like that the message is going to get out there in a positive way. So that's, that's what we've been doing on the lockdown is we've been working with editors nonstop and we're, we're pushing for it to come out later this year. So, and it's called still working nine to five because we're still working at changing the issues. Yeah. So, so when is it, when is this coming out? I'm, I'm very excited about this. Um, we, we have the 90 minute rough cut will be done in two weeks. And then that has to be shown to Dolly. And then if all goes well, we have Netflix, Hulu and HBO max that are all all interested in picking it up so then we have to make a decision there but we're hoping for december 19th is the actually 40th anniversary of the film coming out in 1980 so we're hoping right there around christmas time will be a, a release congratulations you guys that is thank that you. is really great and 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 thank you for what you're doing i i love when people are given a platform of any kind and you find a way to use it for good and to put positivity out in the world that's just that's awesome you Thank you. And you can't see it, but there's gray hairs here because of the two <laughs> years of, of making this movie. It's a, it's a lot of work. Um, but like I said, I've had to, we've researched, we've learned about the women's movement. It's true with anything you're doing. If we're doing red carpets, if we're making this documentary, you gotta you've got to in. know the history. You've got to put the work in to make that the product come yeah. out the way you want it to. Now, are you guys, are you, are, are you growing the grays simultaneously? Oh yeah, I've got more because see, more. He, he does like online marketing stuff, so I kind of <laughs> handle a lot of the twin stuff. So this documentary, I mean, he's done his part, but I've I, I pay for all of his ideas. That's all <laughs> I'm the one that has to plan when the car's going to pick <laughs> Lily Tomlin up and what time Allison's going to sit. I, I'm been doing all of that behind the scenes. That's funny. So so stress. So this is this is a good experiment here. The the higher level of stress, the more gray hairs. That is a real thing. It is yes, a real thing. It is. Yes. Yeah. And our brother's five years older, so he's been going great, and we've kind of made fun of him, but now we can't do that anymore because we're <laughs> – and it might be 2020 in general with COVID and everything Stress that's happened, happened, but, yeah, it's, it's been a stressful year. It has. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the, the, I think the whole world's going great. Yes. All right, so we got we got pulled up. Joey's got pulled up here. Um, looks like uh, Still Working 9 to 5, the documentary – yeah, um, this some is, of the ladies. Is this and is this your ladies, is this your uh, website uh, here, guys? Yeah, that's it. And the two ladies, uh, Muse and uh, Denise, are up there with the other actresses. But they are uh, with a company in Nashville called Ladies Get Paid. So they actually are fighting for equal pay in Nashville. So we interviewed them when we were there. Um, so it's not just actresses. It's it's actually you know people that are women that are in construction, women that are in a lot of different fields because it's not just all about Hollywood. And I saw there's a there's a link on there, support the film. Is that something people can still do and be a part of? Yes, yeah. they can do that. Absolutely. And we've been uh, we've been really lucky. We just had a, a, a huge agency out of Utah that came in and it, it's two women and they have uh, really helped us fund a lot of the things we need to do. Because you don't realize when you see a film, you have to do color correction, sound editing. You have to do a score. You have to do a graphics package. So there's a lot of things we're still working on, yeah. um, but we're we're very happy with with where we are. It's, it's come a long way from that first you know meeting that we had about it. Based on that, yeah. Based on that still frame on the homepage, I mean, this thing's gonna be a massive hit. I mean, I can already feel it. And, oh, we hope so. If it brings change and it, it opens people's eyes, then that's, that's what, what we, we want to do. So just like with you guys, like not knowing that you know women are equal in the Constitution right now, a lot of people don't know that. That in 1982, when that got struck down, it's never been brought back up for a vote. So that's amazing. That's so what we're to get so out. so our 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 nonprofit over here is called uh, Lighthouse Theater. And, and, and that's how this, this show got started uh, via COVID, actually. So COVID started, we had to shut down our theater. And so we're like, hey, we gotta do something. So like, let's just put, let's just do good for people. We'll, we'll go on air live and we'll just try to give advice, you know, and just kind of be nice. 
and then all of a sudden it just it took wings you know we've been going every day we haven't missed pretty much since we started and um and our our whole and idea the, early yeah it's awesome y'all are early <laughs> yeah yeah uh, bro i'm up at like 3 34 every day so like i'm like, i'm like waiting for these guys to wake up to start the show yeah yeah it's different for us okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> no but like like what we're trying to do is very similar to you guys and it's, it's why you know you were drawn to us you know and i, I believe there's there's a purpose for everything you know but we want to spread light driven content to the planet that's what that's like our, yes. our goal here so this show right now like that's what we're doing you know and and what the idea being too like i don't mind going in the dark actually like i don't mind mm -hmm. going to real issues and and seeing the way it really was and the idea is to shed light on it you know like like yes. you were saying no. we got we got to turn a flashlight and go hey guys look this has been hiding under here let's expose it and then you know we don't even need to judge we don't need to be negativity we just got to go hey this is true now let's fix it you know like that's yes. yeah, to me absolutely. is such a huge deal and I, and I love that the, the idea of media like what we can do for good is is incredible so so you might take your your money and donate to a cause which is great or you could potentially donate to this film and have a huge impact because now all of a sudden like how many people might see this film and be impacted by it and the better the color correcting is and the better the editing and everything coming yes. together the the more of a potential for impact that that we have here so um so that that's the idea behind lighthouse the idea behind what you guys are doing i highly recommend if you're watching right now go to the go to the website what's the website uh, still working nine to five dot com. And is it is it nine the the number or nine you spell it out? And then T O five the number nine T O five dot com. And so still it, working nine to five. The the number five or you spell out five? Number five. Uh, so it's it's the five uh, the number five and the number nine and then T O in the middle. Got it. So working working it's nine to five. The nine and the five are are, are numbers. Still working nine to five dot com. Go there. You can donate. And, and help these guys get this movie finished. And guess what? You, you will then officially be a producer. You'll mm -hmm. have produced a film exactly, exactly. that is changing we, the we world. It doesn't matter if you donate five bucks or, or 10 bucks or a thousand bucks, whatever you give, you're now a part of this, this idea to, to help others and to, sh and to shed a light on this very, very, very important issue. So um, I'm, I'm gonna donate today, guys. Yo, I'm, I'm literally, gonna... literally doing it right Are now. Are you? Okay, I'm good. All right. Doing it right. You guys are awesome. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll donate to you guys because that's what you do. You give back and yes. you, give, you pay it forward. So that's how it works. You guys are a fun interview. That's I mean, <laughs> Well, well I, I have a question I have to ask you actually, because this came on the uh, on the IG yesterday. One of our one of our fans of the show and, and a student here, um, she wrote in and she wanted to know what, what if you have any tips, because you guys are obviously the interview, you know, champions of the world. Mm -hmm. Um what what do you have any tools or tricks that you use to get over your nerves right before you're about to give an interview? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and this is true with us more. I think when we're on the carpets. And actually, hold on, I'm gonna interrupt you. I'm sorry, I interrupt you real quick. So I, I want to give this girl a plug too. She, her name is uh, Elizabeth Lambert. We can we can find her online. She's a huge TikToker. She's got a great following. So you can talk directly to Elizabeth. This is her question. Okay. She's probably watching hey, right now. How are you doing, Elizabeth? Wake up early. We're glad to be here. <laughs> one, thing I will say, one thing I will say, Elizabeth, no matter what we're doing, if you're on set and there's lights and crew and cameras and they're about to yell action at you and you have to deliver your line, or if we're on a carpet yeah. and Nicole Kidman is walking up towards us and we have to deliver a line to her, one thing we always do and say to each other is just keep taking deep breaths. And I'm talking about like a deep breath and breathe it out we yes. do it every time we're on a set and we always try to do 10 deep breaths and really feel the breath if you ever take yoga yoga is something that really relaxes you and you know we used to make fun of yoga but now that we're older we love yoga because it really helps you get grounded with yourself so i would just say take deep full breaths and just be in the moment and know that that moment is wrapped around you and, we always and you got to be prepared because what we learned when we got on our first carpet we were there to actually interview dolly we knew dolly was going to be at the movie awards but what we didn't realize was we had to interview 40 people before, before dolly, dolly came so a lot of people that first night we were just throwing one so we had, we had like elizabeth perkins and tay diggs they yeah. would just drop them in front of us and we'd have to say oh hey how you? and we have to do we it or not yeah we yeah. got our tail kicked on the first one and even people that we didn't even know who they were because we didn't really do our research and get prepared. We didn't know what questions to ask. And was we really, some of them we didn't even know who they were. So it was, it was, you so I would ready. just say, Elizabeth, be prepared. And then also when you get to the moment, 
take your deep breaths and know that that moment is wrapped around you and just be in that moment. You take a deep breath because you're in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> and then we still have two more as well. If you two don't more mind questions. Yeah, yeah, these are more just like silly set yeah, of side fun ones. Um, okay, so uh, well, I just lost it. And this also goes back to this idea too when you were saying like, like I, I, I don't even know who this person is because they're famous, but, but only to people who know who they right. are if you've seen them right so then you could you could potentially not know somebody and they can see it in your eyes if you're being honest or not right so i don't even know who you are that could be offensive to somebody like yeah, I, i'm walking got, the right he got he got jane seymour and see another thing we found out you've got to figure out who's nominated who's presenting who's doing what because he said to jane seymour congratulations on being nominated she goes she was, well, well i'm not nominated, nominated. i mean i'm presenting and so i was like well great job presenting we can't wait to see you there. <laughs> good so, job I mean, on that you thing gotta just, you gotta be prepared kids <laughs> and your cheeks just go red just long <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, Astrid, these are just sort of, again, fine one, uh, fun ones. Astrid said, who's the most uh, interesting person you've interviewed? And I'm sure there's tons, but, like, she'd like to know for you guys. Glenn Close was a fun one because our thing is twin zone. So at the end, we're always trying to get the big ones to say, this is Glenn Close in the twin zone. We just wanted to say that. So, of course, she just won the Oscar, and she was like, this is Glenn Close in the time zone. <laughs> <laughs> Again, so we're gonna go with that on film. You see me and like go, oh, and then we didn't correct her. So now we have that moment with her. Um, she was great. Dolly's always great. Suzanne um, Summers. She literally right in the middle of her thoughts, she realized we were twins, and she's like, "Holy crap, you're identical twins!" And she did her whole Chrissy moment. So she, um, Bill, uh, Bill Murray was Bill great Murray because he we had a great thing with him because our dad we used to watch all those movies. So he was just when you've got a connection with them, you you can tell you're in the zone with them. So Bill Murray was another fun one. Yeah. Wait, so so time out. You 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 are good friends with Dolly Parton, who's your mom's favorite, and you're good friends with Bill Murray, who's your dad's favorite. Like, are you just your your parents' favorite people? Like, <laughs> no, obviously, no, 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 but with our, dad, with our dad. Um, so when we were growing up, you only had one TV in your house, and our dad's like, y'all can watch anything you want, but Friday at eight o'clock is Dallas. So he watched the show called Dallas. And we did too. So his favorite person in the whole world was J.R. Ewing, which was Larry Hagman. So we went to this event that Larry Hagman was at, and he called our dad and talked to our dad for ten minutes on the phone. So that was like the best son moment ever that and, got. and then our sister-in-law she loves Brooks and Dunn so we were in a hotel somewhere in LA and Brooks and Dunn were sitting at the bar so we literally went up and we said we're literally going to be watching you guys next in Raleigh North Carolina was their concert but our sister-in-law is your number one fan he goes well dial her up so, so she's, she's sitting there talking to Brooks and Dunn in the lobby of a hotel and she said she almost passed out so, so those so, moments you pay it forward to other people yeah. it's not always about you so yeah. that, that's another key issue so 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 an important thing is don't ever deny a phone call from these guys because <laughs> you don't know who's on the other side of that right? telephone line <laughs> that's great all right I'm last like, question we've got dr oz go <laughs> so last one kind of deals with that it was just nick wanted to know uh as as far as that goes like what's a crazy silly like celebrity story as far as that goes like a crazy story of one of them <laughs> um i know we did the mel gibson one that was funny we did um ah hang on let me think on the carpet on the carpet um or what about just working with somebody oh well um one we can go back with uh ben stiller he was another one of those where he was the producer the director and everything so after he had pulled us out and uh put us in that scene he we're kind of like we're north carolina so if we're working on the movie with Ben Stiller, we want a picture, we want to remember it and all that stuff. But th they had also said, do not approach Ben Stiller. So we had gone to lunch with the other twins that had got pulled into the scene as well. And we were walking down the street, going back to set, and the trailers for the, all the stars, Ben Stiller and all them, were like were on the street. Ben Stiller came out of the trailer and called me and Larry and the other twins over. And he goes, I just want to tell you guys, I think it's awesome. We got two sets of twins here. And do you want to take a picture? Yes, yes. 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 
He had two sets of twins on each side of him, and then we took it back the next day. He signed it. We did the same thing with Mel Gibson. This he is a funny it. one. New York. Okay, so we're in Central Park. This is in 97. So 97, but we were in Central Park just rollerblading. And so we come out of Central Park, like up on the Upper West Side, and we see a, a movie set. We see the craft service. We're like, oh, God, they're filming something. Let's go see what's going on. So right when we get to craft services, we see Al Pacino. Al Pacino. So Al Pacino's standing there getting a banana, whatever. We get a picture with him. So then we're like, I don't even know what this was. So then we look over and we see Keanu Reeves coming out of a church. So it was the devil's advocate. We didn't know it. We stumbled up on that movie. So Keanu comes up and we're like, Keanu, can we get a picture? And then, well, let me tell you, Keanu wasn't nice. He wasn't so nice. we're like, Keanu, can we get a picture? <laughs> we're like on rollerblades. He's like, we're like Keanu. He goes, what? <laughs> I was, like, I was like, we were just going to ask you for a picture, but at school, he goes, no, it's fine. So we took the picture. The waiter, he said, get somebody to take the picture. So this woman is walking down the street, and her eyes are all dilated. Like a, she's like a crazy person. And we said, will you take a picture? And she just no, passed us. No. So the next person took the picture. So a year later, when we saw the movie, that was Charisse Theron. It was the church scene where they dilated we, her eyes. We asked her to she take the photo, the and lady. she was going back to her trailer. <laughs> Hey, hey it. you random stranger. <laughs> oh man. All right, so you guys could totally do a great impression of Keanu Reeves though. Like you should wait, wait, wait. <laughs> You all remember this. You got to you got to come up with a great sketch. Like that would be hilarious. And in that picture, I'll send you that picture, but me and Larry are smiling real big. He's like this. <laughs> oh, I totally see it. What what if you what if you did like a segment like what if blank star was a twin and then those are your sketches? That's yeah. that that'd be pretty funny. But specifically oh, cool. like they've got a Ben Stiller look on, they got a Keanu Reeves look, you know, yeah. you guys you guys could very easily kind of morph into a couple stars. Yeah. There's a lot of identical twins. The guy that did the um the um what is Mr. Robot, he's an identical twin, Rami. So there's a lot of celebrities yeah, on we, we really hone in when they're a twin. Channing Tatum got a little bit of that going. They're like, all right, I'll, I'll take it. Oh, yeah, we used to get the American Pie guy, Chris Klein. Chris <laughs> Klein. Oh, you know, I can see that. Is that Stifler? Yeah. You're talking about Stifler? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that's funny. That's good, guys. All right, well, thank you so much for being on the show this morning. We sure appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Joanne and Layla, for having us and introduce us to you guys. Yeah, it's amazing. We'll see what, you know, God's going to have a great connection here. We, we've already made one. We'll see what uh, what our paths are. Our paths will probably cross again, I hope. So maybe maybe you'll see one of us on the we'll red carpet. We'll when the doc comes out. If, yeah. if, if, if we're walking down the red carpet to get our award, we will stop. Awesome. You're like, oh, God, it's those friends. Look down. Look <laughs> and, down. And, I'll be and, like, and I'll be like, and I'm on the... I was time zone. I was about the to say, zone. I'll say we'll say the twin zone. We'll say it. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We sure appreciate you, you watching. So thank you. Everybody thank you. Uh, right, please do not forget you. to like, subscribe, share, comment. Um, go see the twins here at the twin zone and go look at everything they're doing. Donate to their film. It's a great idea. Um, and, and thank you, thank you, thank you for, for being a part of our studio and a part of this, this show and helping us to spread light-driven content to the planet. Thank you and Thank God you bless. Thank you guys for having us. Congrats Thank on you. your show. Bye guys. Thank you guys. Thanks for you. listening to Mornings with Matt. Please like, subscribe, and follow us at Deering Acting Studio to keep up with the latest content. For more information on classes, private lessons, or professional development coaching, visit www.deeringstudio.com. Have a Deering day, everyone.